welcome to Stories Podcast. I'm your host, Amanda Weldon. Today's story is called Scaredy Cat, an adaptation of an Aesop's fable written for you by Daniel Hines. Thanks. Enjoy the episode. Scaredy Cat Once upon a time, there was a young lion named Musa. He was great and golden. All his fur was shiny as the sun, and he was sporting some truly terrifically toothsome teeth. He spent his days lounging in the light, basically basking on some rocks with all his friends nearby. Usually, they talked about hunting or pouncing or roaring or other lionly things. But one day, as the clouds covered the sun and a fog rolled in over the forest, their conversation took a turn towards the spooky. Ugh, said Musa, rolling about on his rock. I miss the sun. I want to get warm. I get that, but in a way, isn't this fog just the best? Said Imani, a lovely lioness and one of Musa's oldest friends. Really? Asked Abed, another lordly lion. It's kind of uh, creepy out. I hate it. Creepy is perfect, said Imani. It's almost Halloween. Just gets my hair up a little, said Abed. I don't like being afraid. Afraid, scoffed Musa. You're a lion. What do we have to be afraid of? I'm not afraid afraid, said Abed. He looked around at the curling fog, the sun a hazy memory lost in the mist. I just mean, I don't know. Be quiet. Musa and Imani laughed. Well, you sound like a scaredy cat, said Musa. I'm not afraid of anything. After all, lions are the biggest and the strongest. Nothing even hunts us. What are you even worried about? Scaredy cat? Whatever, said Abed. You guys are being punks today. I'm going home. Aw, we were just talking, said Imani. Well, uh, talk to each other, said Abed, and he stood up and headed home, moving a little bit quicker than normal to get away from the fog. I should probably head home, too, said Imani. It's hard to tell what time it is when you can't see the sun, and I don't want to be back late for dinner. Mom said we're having zebra, and you know that's my favorite. Go get it said Musa, slapping her a high paw. Take an extra chomp for me. You know it, Amani said, and then she too slipped away into the misty evening. Musa rolled around a while, chasing brief beams of sunshine that flitted through the fog, but it was no use. There was no way to get warm on such a dreary day, no matter how hard he tried. I guess I'd better go home too, Musa said to himself. Mom probably got dinner already, and I'm so hungry I could eat a hippo. His stomach rumbled like an approaching thunderstorm. Maybe two hippos, oh, with a pink flamingo for dessert. He stood up and gave a yawn that showed so many teeth that half the forest would have run for cover had they seen it. All right then, let's go. Musa started walking and noticed the rocks looked a little bit strange. It's hard to say how when it's just a pile of boulders, but it wasn't quite right. Must have gone the wrong way, said Musa. All this lousy fog had me turned around. The golden lion turned and walked for a few more minutes before he noticed the ground started to turn spongy and soft. This isn't right, he said tail swaying with the first hint of nerves. Maybe I got a little turned around. He turned around and walked a little, but the ground only grew more wet, so he turned again and again and again. Soon, it felt like he was walking in circles, and the fog was thicker than ever, and a heavy scent started to fill his sensitive nose. The smell was rotting and rank and wet and moldy, It was the smell of a swamp, though Musa had never been in one before. Okay, so I'm a little lost. No big deal. He kept walking, 
swerving around stinking little pools of stagnant water and half-dead plants. The fog was thicker than ever, darker than ever, and Musa thought of Abed. Nothing to be afraid of. I'm not a scaredy cat. Suddenly, from out in the wood, came a shockingly long, shockingly loud, brrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrr
Musa? came a voice, echoing from the mist. Here! Here! called Musa, spinning in circles, trying to find the voice or the monster or anything. Help! The sound was closer than ever. It was right on top of him. It was all around him. What could he do? Musa, here, it's Abed. Abed, Musa cried. He sprinted through the mist and nearly collided with his friend. I'm so glad to see you. What's wrong? Abed asked, taking in Musa's wild whiskers and flurried fur. I was being chased. There was a monster. I... The sound came from Musa's own back, and he nearly leapt out of his fur. What is it? Get it off me! Help! Dude, relax, said Abed. He calmly reached over and steadied Musa. Once his friend was still, Abed lifted the monster from his back. Musa cringed back as Abed showed him a very fat frog. This is what you were so afraid of? That can't be it, said Musa. It was all around me. They were roaring. Prop, croaked the frog. It echoed in the heavy fog, making it sound bigger and louder than it really was. Prop, 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 answered frogs all over the swamp. I, wow, said Musa, suddenly very embarrassed. He was a lion. How had he been so afraid? I guess I'm the scaredy cat after all. Nah, it was uh, it was spooky out there with the fog and all that, said Abed. It's like I was trying to say earlier. I'm not afraid afraid because I know there's nothing out there, not really. But at the same time, sometimes my imagination gets away from me and I end up scaring myself. Yeah, said Musa. That's definitely what happened to me. Sorry for goofing on you earlier. Oh, it's okay, man, said Abed. It'll be worth it when I get to tell Imani how I found you running away from some frogs. Musa stared at him with new horror in his eyes. <laughs> I wouldn't, Abed said with a laugh. Come on, you can stay for dinner. What are you having? Musa asked. We're having frogs. <laughs> Just kidding. Abed laughed all the harder. Okay, I deserved that one, Musa said, laughing now too. Now come on, I'm hungry. All that screaming worked up an appetite. The two lions laughed together and then went off to find Abed's parents and dinner. The End Thanks for listening! 